Welcome back to The House Doctor. Coming up next, I'm gonna show you how I do the rough-in plumbing for a laundry room renovation I'm working on. What I need to do today is take this existing plumbing the way the laundry room used to be. I need to disconnect all of it and move the plumbing over to the other wall on this side. When you're doing a project like this, you need to have an idea of where everything's going to end up. So what I did was I marked on the floor and drew some lines so I know where the plumbing needs to be. You'll see I marked the center line of the wash tub so I can get the drain connection as close as I can to the center. I have an outlet here that's in the room on the other side of this wall. I need to avoid that. And I have a return vent here that I need to run plumbing through and I'll show you how I'm going to take care of that. There are special considerations when running pipe through a cold air return. show you where I'm at so far. This is the drain coming through the wall from a sink on the other side and it goes down and the drain line continues around and over here this is the trap for the washing machine. This drain continues on for the wash tub. I'll get to that in a minute and then we have two vent pipes going up to help me and my inspector here checking the pipes. Oh, good boy. Okay, sit. Lay down. Okay, I just wanted to say real quick about these pipe cutters. This is my first job using this. These things are great. Um, it takes a little oomph to cut through the two inch PVC with this, but it really is a time saver because you don't have to deal with the, the fuzz if you cut it with a hacksaw or the mess if you cut it with a chop saw. I recommend you get these. There'll be a link in the description below where you can pick these up really inexpensive. and plumbing all done except to button up a few things and then I'll start on the supply lines. Right here we have a return air vent from the room on the other side of this wall and I didn't have any choice but to run the drain line through this return air vent. In order to keep myself safe from the internet police flaming me, I wrapped it with sheet metal so it 
I wouldn't have the flammable pipe in the cold air return. I'll seal it up on the edges here with some fireproof caulk. In this room, I'm going to be using PEX to run the supply lines for the hot and cold water. A quick tip for you is when you're working with something like this, whether it's PEX tubing or electrical wire, when it comes coiled up like this, Heat it out from the middle. That way you can leave the wrapping on there. You don't have to worry about when you're done for the day, coiling it back up or tying it or taping it off. Before you start running your pipes through the wall, it's a good idea to tape up the ends of the pipes you don't have to worry about dirt, debris, anything getting inside of your pipe. When you have to make a sharp bend, like in this corner here, you want to use a metal brace like this to reinforce the pecs for that sharp turn so you don't get a kink in the pipe. It's going to be a little difficult to feed through here. I put an inch and a half hole on this side and a one inch hole on this side. Obviously that was a fail. Let's try this again and I'll start feeding through the corner first and then work out both ways from there. That was a little bit of a struggle, but I'll tell you what, much easier than routing copper and soldering all the connections to go through all those studs and around all those drain lines. Now let's set up our stub outs for the sink. This tool right here is for shark bite fittings. Whether you're using PEX or copper with shark bite, you really should get one of these. It has a little cutting wheel inside each size pipe. You can barely see it there, a the little black dot. And that takes the little lip off the edge of the pipe. With these, it's not too bad because I used these cutters. Um, but when you're cutting copper pipe with a wheel cutter, it leaves a little ridge and you need to get rid of that. And you just kind of spin this around the pipe. One more thing that you use this for is to mark your pipe so you can be sure that the shark bite fitting is going on far enough. I use these shark bite caps when I'm stubbing out plumbing, whether I'm using copper or PEX. These things are great slide right on and then you don't have any worries about having to get a torch inside of your vanity or whatever it else that you're working on. There's another handy tool, shark bite fitting remover. This didn't go on completely and the reason why is this white plastic sleeve inside got crooked so I need to make sure that goes in place there now you can see we're all the way up to the line last connection that I need to make is the washing machine supply lines we're gonna come down and tee in right here had I uh, thought about it sooner I could have made running these lines much easier 
from the corner because I could have just done it with a short little piece that ended up right here. All right, let me show you how you make these PEX connections. Take your pipe, slide on your crimp clamp, put your fitting in, put your tool on there, and squeeze it down. And once you squeeze it all the way, the tool will release and you're tight enough. That's not going anywhere. The last connections that I need to make are from the PEX to the old copper where the washing machine used to be connected to. So we'll start by lining everything up and then making our cuts. As I said earlier, when you cut copper pipes with one of those wheel cutters, you need to use something like this to clean up the edges. There's a slight lip left over and that could damage the O-ring on the shark bite fitting. Simple to do, just put this on here and spin it around a few times. This is what you're looking for. Nice clean bevel on the end of the pipe. connections are all made. Last thing we need to do is leak check it. I hope you found this video helpful and you'll take the time to share, subscribe, maybe even give a thumbs up to this video. Tune in next time where I'll show you how I go about putting in a pocket door for this room. Thanks for watching.